let's pick up from where we left off. Chris was talking about a conversation he had with his friend Mark in June where he told Mark he was talking to a girl at work. And he says he wishes that Mark had been like, you know, hey, don't go down that path. That's just interesting to me because it kind of plays into Chris's personality. It's like he's always looking for something or somebody outside himself to tell him what to do. Just like the night he went on the lazy dog date with NK, he says, you know, his friend messaged him. He wishes he would have gone to the game with his friend and told NK, no, I can't go with you. So I just feel like that, again, plays into his personality that he is okay with being controlled and being told what to do. He's always looking for something or someone outside himself to tell him what move to make. And here he's talking about how he wishes Shanann had not gone away for those five weeks because her absence, Five weeks alone, that's the only reason really that was even allowed to happen. Yeah, the, that her absence is why the affair there was There are quite a few happen. people who would tell us, and who do tell us, you need to look into Nikki more and Nikki Kissinger. All the way from the extreme end of things being, Nikki's the one who ordered the hit. She was there, I'm in the basement. She was she there. Was you know, so the, the extreme is, she's the one who told Chris to do it. She's the real problem. All the way, that's the extreme side, and then all the way to... Well, there were these texts where she was infatuated, she was in love, she was saying how good Chris was in the sack. Maybe we should look at her more. You know, what would you say to those people? So Coder's just saying, you know, what would you say to the people who say we need to look into NK? And the fact they even ask him that question is telling to me. Like, if they thought she was totally innocent and had nothing to do with it, why are they even asking that? I mean, when you look at Scott Peterson and his mistress, Amber Fry, people don't think that she is guilty or shady because she was open with the police. She honestly did not know Scott was married and she helped. And Kay knew Chris was married. She did interview and come forward, but before she did so, she was sure to delete her messages and in her own words, do damage control with her dad before helping. And I use that word lightly because she really didn't help very much. Um, law enforcement to so listen to Chris's response. And then I'm going to kind of talk about his response versus, um, kind of what N.K. said about their relationship. Like, you know, she, she had her moments where I had to talk her like off a ledge kind of deal. What does that mean? Like, she, so the first response, there were moments I had to talk her off a ledge type deal. You know, that sounds telling to me. He didn't just say, no, you know, N.K. had nothing to do with it. I No, not at all. This was all me. I don't want her name in this, nothing like that. No, he went to talking about how he had to talk her off a ledge. Again, we're supposed to believe this is like a five, six week relationship. And if, you know, you remember in Cato's book, this is hard to know if it's true. It's, you know, by word of mouth from somebody who plagiarized a book. But she claims that N.K. was there and, um, you know, got really upset saying that she wanted to give Chris a son and that he was able to kind of talk her down from her anger and that NK really liked that about Chris. I guess after the fact, there was like videos of her that she was like recording herself because she was like bipolar or something. I never knew that. But there, it's like, and she would get worked up about nothing. She would just like, she came to my house once, because I think it was like July, July 4th. So he's saying she would get worked up about nothing. And now he's going to talk about the July 4th, which this is the day you'll hear. He claims he was at NK's house, spent the night, woke up to missed calls from Shanann, said, I got to go. Shanann's freaking out. 
and Kay says, are you coming back? He says, probably not. Next thing we know, NK is coming to his house. And um, this is, you know, when NK talks about going to Chris's house, she says once she showed up when he was already there and that she went through the front door and the carpet was wet because he had shampooed the carpet. To me, I think that was the July 4th date. I think she showed up at his house unannounced. We know NK likes to Google things, and I think it's very, you know, easy. I think she would have been able to find their address. She's pretty, I think she's, you know, more tech savvy and smart than she, like, you know, leads on. So anyway, July 4th, he's going to talk about his version. I, I didn't have to work that day, so I didn't, like, get up at, like, you know, 4 o'clock and go home. And she had called me, like, 10 times in a row. And I didn't hear it because I was asleep. I was just like, and she was pissed. She was, was pissed. She was pissed. And like, I called her on the outside, like, where are you at? Like, what are you doing? And I, I was like, I didn't have to work today. It's like, if you call me at like, you know, 5.30, it's like, the kids want to talk to you at 7.30. And I'm like, like, I was sleeping. She's like, you know, she just like, you know, screw you. Like, you know, like, I don't know where you're at. And, and I went back inside something, like, I gotta go. And she was just like, Okay, are you coming back? Like, so wait a minute, you kind of lost me there. Were you at Nikki's place yeah. when Shanann called you? Yeah. Okay, and so you were sleeping in her bed. Yeah, because I wasn't going to work that day. Cause it was, okay. I didn't have to that day. Mm -hmm. okay. First holiday, I ran off. And, so, you know, she, Shanann was pissed. And, you know, I kind of pissed Nikki off too that I just, that I left. But I think that's when she, uh, I called Nikki later and she was like, you know, she kind of realized that, you know, she'd always be like, Second, second, she said second fill. Sure. And because that's how I thought it would come back that day. Just, you know, I, I don't want to be anywhere else when she calls. She was already pissed. So, you know, it was stuff like that where she would real, like, she would go, she, she said she would go on, like, uh, websites and look at, like, role or relationship work with somebody. So right there, Chris claims that, you know, NK was pissed when he left to go home and felt like she would always be second. Now, remember in NK's interviews, she's telling them that she always told Chris, you know, don't worry about us, like focus on fixing this. You need to fix it, da da da. So, you know, a couple days into their relationship, cause she says things don't really heat up till like the end of June, early July. This is July 3rd into July 4th. Chris is talking about NK is already freaking out when he leaves her apartment to go back home. So it just, again, it, none of this makes sense to me. The timelines don't make sense. The behaviors don't make sense. The contradictory statements by NK do not make sense. It's just all confusing and I want more answers. Body, like a little mistress work, a little mistress turned through a relationship. That's what Nikki was looking at? Yeah. She would tell you that or you told that? me that. Okay. Yeah, she said that she would go on websites and look at stuff like that. Just to, I was like, why do you even look at stuff like that? She's like, I just want to see what other people have experienced. But like, so that confuses me though because I thought earlier you were saying she thought you were heading toward a divorce. So why was she looking at herself as this a mistress? Was, this was later on. Oh. Like, okay. you know, in August, like the first week of August, when I told her, like, you know, I hadn't had that talk with her about separation, uh -huh. that's when, like, she would start looking at, like, apartment and stuff. But, like, during our July relationship type thing there, oh, I see. that's when she was looking up, like, you know, you know if it actually were to work. So right there is a little confusing as well. Like, he's, Chris is telling them how NK was looking up, will a mistress work, things like that. And Coder's like, why is she looking that up? I thought you told her you were headed towards separation. And he was like, oh, that was more later on in August around, you know, North Carolina. So, you know, what, like, what exactly was said between NK and Chris in regards to the separation? Like, I just wonder if, you know, NK is embellishing the extent that Chris told her the separation was happening a little bit. Like, maybe Chris didn't tell her 
as much as she's acting like he did. Yeah, she, told, she told her friend Brittany about it, I guess. Brittany told her not to do it, but she said she already made a decision. Remember, N.K. first told investigators that nobody knew about Chris. Her friends did not know she was spending time with him because he's kind of with two women right now. That was my N.K. impersonation. Um, but anyway, so and then we find out she does know, I'm sorry, that she did tell Charlotte. And now Chris brings up this friend named Brittany, who I personally have not heard about if you've heard about Brittany, let me know in the comments, but I haven't. I've heard about Charlotte, and that is who she was sending, like, the sexual content text messages to on August 12th when she was supposedly at the museum with her family. And so, are those people absolutely wrong about Nikki? She wasn't asking you to get rid of your family? No. Are you sure? No. Okay. And no part of any of this was because she put it in your head or asked you to or you never I mean this whole this whole relationship contributed to it. So their coders like, you know, are they wrong? He you know, she didn't ask you to do this and Chris is just kinda like, no, no. And then he says this whole relationship contributed to it. So again, like <sighs> You know, even if N.K. knew nothing about the murders, nothing about the plans, nothing before, she didn't help, she didn't know after. Even if she knew nothing, which I believe she knew things, and I won't get into all my theories, but I believe she probably aided him in this crime. I don't think he could have done this alone. But even if she didn't know anything, I mean, that right there, Chris is saying, this contributed to it. Sure. But she never, it never, she didn't okay. want me to I mean, was it ever like, I wish you didn't have kids, I want to have, you know, kids of my own with you, like. Uh, she wants, I mean, she never knew if she wanted to have kids, but she said that, you know, at one point she said, I didn't like giving this up. So right there, and you kind of hear that, um, you know, Tammy Coder and Baumhopper go quiet, like, he goes from saying she never knew if she wanted to have kids, but she wanted to give me a son. So it's like, which one is it, NK? Like, it just, again, it sounds like she's really playing head games with Chris. Like, I don't know if I want kids, but, oh, I want to give you a son. And in the meantime, Shanann is posting all over Facebook that she's pregnant. You know, Chris knows it's a boy, um, so... I don't know. What well, did she know that Shanann was pregnant with a boy? No. Did she know Shanann was pregnant? No. And why is that? You just didn't tell her? I didn't know. Like, because we hadn't met. But Shanann put that on Facebook. So right there, she's asking if she's pregnant. We know Shanann's Facebook was very open. I mean, she had a completely public Facebook timeline. Her timeline has been... Um, deleted now but you can go back and see like when NK was actively looking at Shanann's Facebook during the affair there were definitely posts where she would have um, seen Shanann was pregnant so you know Tammy Lee seems taken back by that like um, how would she not know that's, that's, like how did she not see that I don't know maybe she did she just waited to tell her or she put it on her head can I ask you a question? A lot of people think you may to go after Nikki. This is talking about, so you know, the baby's name Nico was, was going to be Nico. Shanann thought of that one. Yeah, I actually saying that was not after Nikki and Shanann thought of it. That way. Mm -hmm. But she said N I C O. I thought of like, like Nico or something. Okay. I guess Nico is, is more of like an Italian name. Italian, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and like, she did leave her, you know. My little name and my dad and all that, but like Nico's, like that's the name that she always liked. Okay. Did she name all the kids? Did she named Bella and Celeste? So yeah, Bella, because little Italian means beautiful, Marie, mom's going. And here Tammy kind of changed the subject. Like, you know, they were trying to talk about NK right here, and Coder kind of stays on topic saying, you know, 
a lot of, you know, she, your son wasn't named after NK, right? And Chris is like, no, and tells the story of how she named Nico. Well, then instead of like circling back to NK conversation, Tammy asks, did Shanann name all the kids? I mean, why does that even matter at this point? Celeste, it's her grandmother's name, Catherine's grandmother. Did you have any input in their names? I, I liked it. I was like, I was like, if we have, well, like, if we had a third child, you know, I was gonna, maybe we could have like Lee in the middle name, but you know, like, you know, I knew like the girls' names. I love those names. So like, that's cool. mm -hmm. Especially like with the, you know, we have all like names for them, you know, like Belle and Bellevine and CC, obviously. So I guess you could say, you know, Tammy kind of just wanted to know what input Chris had on the names just to kind of get more insight into their relationship. Like, were the names decided on together? Was that Shanann's decision? But it just seems off topic to me. You know, I would rather them continue to ask him questions about NK. Can we go back to the house on the 13th? So, um, at one point, right when you got back there, Coonrod was there, Officer Coonrod and Nicole was there. Okay, I'm going to stop there. And you hear, it sounds like, okay, the NK topic is wrapped up. Bomb Haver, you know, goes back to asking about the house. So, I just feel like, just like in August, there were a few times that Chris tried to talk about NK and about the affair. And in my opinion, it seems like L.E., you know, law enforcement, changes the subject. And just like in this clip, did N.K. have anything to do with it? Some people say she may have ordered the hit or she was hiding in the basement. You know, that would have been a great time to go back to the basement. Instead of talking about where the girls' names came from, why not, you know, continue to pressure and talk about NK a little bit and say, there was a lot of activity in the basement. Are you sure nobody else was there? It just, in my opinion, just seems like they really skim over NK and even the basement. Um, when in reality, NK was the closest person to Chris before the crime. So therefore, by default, I feel she should have been looked at closer. Chris should have been questioned about her more. Chris should have been allowed to talk about her more. It, it just seems like they changed the subject off of her a lot. So I'm going to stop there and continue the rest later. Thank you guys for watching.